This is uh, the July 19th, 2012 meeting of the Situate Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, because of my addled brain, the first item is incorrectly on the agenda. Uh, there is no more request for modification of the comprehensive permit of Stockbridge Re for Stockbridge Realty Trust because we already approved it. Didn't we have to do so a That decision item is though? thereby mm -hmm. null and void. Um, yeah, but uh, Mr. Galvin was going to give us what he wanted. We okay, still have so time for that. So the time. so the next uh, the uh, first item. Okay. Well, uh, Ms. Hopkins, I, I assume uh, Adam's not, Mr. Brodsky is not here tonight, but I, I assume you've pretty much presented everything that you have to present. Well, was it Adam's understanding that testimony was closed and this was just a decision, so oh. Did we close testimony? We took a vote. I don't think we closed testimony, but. On one question. We just voted on the one question? Yeah, we voted on half of it and left the other half open. Yes. Right? We have, well, we have Neil's letter from. Well, we have Neil's letter. Do you want that there? Or if you'd like. I'd go wherever you'd like. If the seats are more comfortable. Well, it is my recollection that what we did was act upon a portion of Neil's decision in which he determined that the statute of limitations on the enforcement of building permit was, un would, was time barred but that we still left open the issue of dealing with whether or not an enforcement action was warranted with respect to whether or not the the use of the the outside use of the property for composting was a, a uh, unlawful expansion of uh, an existing non-conforming use and we have yet to deal with that part of it and I don't believe that we made any motion to close the uh, testimony. We continued the hearing till tonight. Um, and so I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to discuss here openly. Jeff. I'm sorry, Peter. I, I just, if I could hear Nicole read, uh, read that vote to me again, I'd appreciate that. Yes. That's not what I heard. Well, it's not what I, I don't think that's what we voted, but let's go ahead, go ahead and, and read what you've got there, Nicole. So
Well, that's only part of what happened. What else happened? Well, there were, as, uh, as uh, we... Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I gotta keep reading down. Warren motion to hear the other portion of the committee continued until July 19, 2012. Second by Speaker. Uh, all in favor. Sorry, okay. I didn't get that. All right. Second volume. So, as, uh, as the dispute had unfolded here, there was, a, there was a dispute about what it was that Mr. Brodsky had asked Mr. Duggan to do. Uh, one school of thought was that he asked for uh, a cease and desist order um, uh, on the basis that the, the, um, that the use was illegal and, and, and Neil's decision was that he was time barred from doing so because the building permit authorizing the use um, had been issued more than seven years, six years ago. And so he was time barred from enforcing under Section 7, he was uh, time barred from enforcing uh, a violation of the building permit. Um, the second portion of uh, Mr. I'm sorry. Mr. DeLisi's letter was not so specific as to relate only to the building permit, but also asked took the position that the use of the property for composting was either a illegal or if it had been a lawful non-conforming use, um, had been uh, substantially expanded or altered. That's Mr. Gillespie. Not yes, Mr. right, that was, and, <coughs> and Mr. Duggan had been unable to conclude his investigation uh, uh, with regard to that aspect of Mr. Brodsky's uh, appeal, and that's what's left on the table. All right? I don't, I don't read his latest letter as a, as a new determination, uh, only, uh, but, well, actually, I think we're certainly able to deal with his letter tonight insofar as it is, it, it, it is his attempt to respond to the second part of the issue that remains open. We did not fully uh, adjudicate Mr. Brodsky's appeal last week, last month. Okay, so wouldn't Mr. Brodsky have to, or somebody, other interested party, have to take an appeal of Mr. Duggan's most recent position as it states new? Right, yeah. Procedurally, this, this seems a bit arbitrary to me. Well, there's a lot about what's happened in the last three months that is unusual. Uh, but uh, in f for all intents and purposes, my, my point of view tonight is that what, whatever Mr. Duggan's letter says is, uh, do does not affect the, the uh, position that I intend to advocate tonight. So um, uh, I'm, my, my uh, my desire to uh, finish with the hearing of this appeal 
uh, is <coughs> is to is to uh, uh, is to conclude the receipt of evidence or testimony, right, and then uh, to uh, to determine how the board wants to uh, to deal with the the remaining aspect of Mr. <coughs> Brodsky's appeal. Yeah. Um, I would just want to address the procedural aspect of this. Okay. As you know, I've been building spec for 18 years. Yep. I'm well versed in zoning bylaw. I'm well versed in case law. I'm particularly well versed in this aspect of case law. Um, a a reception by a complainant that a building inspector isn't enforcing the bylaw in the manner that he wishes it enforced is only appealable uh, if the building inspector writes uh, something. He cannot appeal in an action by a building inspector, which I would respectfully submit that has not been in an action by the building inspector. I've devoted 10, 20 hours to this uh, in, in a very busy schedule. Uh, but having said that, uh, procedurally, um, this matter, uh, we had this conversation before. If Mr. Uh, the other Brodsky wished to pursue this matter, he would have to uh, seek a mandamus in a court of law. Uh, a building inspector's inaction is never before the zoning board of appeal, I would respectfully submit. What was in front of this board was an appeal uh, of my decision not to extinguish the use. Mm -hmm at all times, and I didn't develop just because I, I didn't want to impact you know, the other attorneys, the other uh, uh, party. Um, I, I have felt there was an expansion. I have been working for two months with Mr. Nielsen, uh, as you can see by my letter. He's done a tremendous job to reduce the uh, area, reduce the material, uh, create a buffer, and this letter was really, a, a, it was, I mean, I, I, really a matter of courtesy to give to the board. The board at this stage, I would respectfully submit, did not involve my investigation, did not involve my enforcement. The board, I think, acted, uh, you know, I yeah, upheld my decision. I, I, I thankfully for that. Um, and now Mr. Brodsky can appeal that to the courts. Um, and I just feel procedurally, uh, this, this letter certainly is indicative that I have been investigating, have been enforcing. Uh, and if you look at the zoning bylaw, the building inspector has the discretion to, to do the enforcement in a manner that he deems appropriate. This is the manner I deem appropriate um, for now. But this, this isn't final. There's much more to be done. And I thought perhaps that we would have a conversation that, you know, parties perhaps would say, okay, what do you want? Uh, are you going to go to court and try to get a judge who's seen with you? Or are you going to work with this judge? Um, and I think a lot of progress has been made towards, you know, a resolution like that. But that's not going to happen. You know, frankly, uh, if it's just going to go to court, it's going to be in the hands of the judge. I don't see, <laughs> it seems to be, you know, spending a lot of energy for not. And that's what I hope would happen tonight. I, I really am a little surprised that, that you know, the, the position is that the board is going to make a determination. I, I would just, you know, and the board obviously can do whatever they like to this but you know, that's the procedure. I, I don't think Well, is there anything about what I've, how I've just described what happened in the past that, that you disagree with? I mean, l last month, we said, okay, we'll deal with this piece of it and we'll finish the second piece next month, all right? Did you have a problem with the second part of that? The only, the, uh, under the statute, the only thing that I'm required to do um, is provide a determination within 14 days if I disagree, okay? If I agree, and I do in part, it, as I've indicated in my letter, there's no statutory limitation on it. If, if the Complaining party believes that you know things aren't going fast enough. They can go to court and get a mandamus, uh, which in this case uh, it, it, it's not going to happen. You know, I, I could I could show you the amount of work I put into this, the amount of work I have in other zone issues, and, and <coughs> the amount of work that's been done uh, to mitigate. Uh, well, this board, uh, in, in the context of the appeal, it's still before us, and the, and the hearing is open. 
right? We have it in our authority to, to decide, to make a decision as to whether the use of that property for composting is a legal use, <coughs> if it's a lawful non-conforming use, and if it's been expanded such that it requires special permit relief. Do you disagree with that? Yes, I, I believe they would have to file, somebody would have to file an application to get that permit. I believe the, um, the, the, the plaintiff, what we call uh, yeah. in the case, uh, would have to file an application for special permit if we want to get, you know, go down that road. Yeah. Um, Jeff. If I might jump in. Um, Section 950 of your bylaw talks about what the powers of and the authority of the Zoning Board of Appeals is. Mm -hmm. Section 950 says to hear and decide appeals made pursuant to 48 Section 8. All right. For which Mr. Brodsky's initial appeal was. Mm -hmm. And then also to hear and decide special permit applications and variance applications. So I heard a vote at the last hearing that upheld the determination of the building inspector that he did not have the authority to grant the relief that was requested because he was time barred. End of story, right? I mean. No, I don't think so. I think the case law says end of story when we write a decision. Sure, a final, final action based on your vote, right? So, in other words, are you, uh, do you have any authority to take any additional vote this evening? Is there a question before you that hasn't already been answered by the building inspector? To the extent that the building inspector made a decision uh, that uh, as to his authority to act on the, on the appeal, um, as, it, as it related to the building permit that was issued in 1992. 92? Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I answered the. As it relates I to the. Out in my letter, the building permit. He opined about. He never asked for enforcement. He asked that I stay with the new cease and desist. That was his direct question. Right. A month later, <coughs> he sent me another letter clarifying, okay, which, which, which is, was the operative uh, uh, request, February 28th. 2012. That was the operative request for enforcement, which I began working on. Um, the only statutory requirement to send Mr. Mr. Brodsky a letter with respect to my uh, actions that I was taking was if I had decided not to take any action. That wasn't the case. I'm under no statutory requirement to speed things up, uh, uh, go to court, send a fine, and this is completely within my discretion. And if, if my, my point is, if Mr. Brodsky wants to, uh, you know, he has an opportunity to go to court and seek a mandamus, uh, at which point I would uh, be quite sure that uh, he would not prevail. All right, so is it, is it your position that his second letter does not come within the purview of the original request? Absolutely. I think it was his admission that, <coughs> that perhaps the first request was not clear. All right. And we are, but we are here to act upon your response to his letter of February 28th, right? Which you did. If, if I right? could just say something. Well, wait, yes or no? Is it yes, February 20? Okay. I agree. All right. So that's the operative letter that we're dealing with. Right. February well, let me, it, let's, for argument purposes. Yeah. That first letter asked for two things. The first thing I denied, and I, 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 I sent him the letter within 14 days. He appealed it, okay? It, 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 the appeal of my not doing anything with regard to the second part, uh, assuming that the second part was in that letter, what, it's not right. He's not before this board. That's, that's my position. Because I am, in fact, uh, I do agree with him in part. And, and, I, and I am taking action. And I'm, I'm taking the action that I deem appropriate to do the enforcement. Um, if I give a final letter stating, okay, this is it, and this is all we're going to do, that letter is then subject to appeal. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you. 
Okay. You haven't denied it. Huh? So there's no appeal. I haven't denied it. Right. In I'm fact, it sounds to me like you, you, you're enforcing it. I agree with it. Yeah. All right. And, I, and I've, I've taken action. So the next step would be you guys to, on that aspect, I agree with Neil. So do you, do you believe that the letter that you sent to, uh, to Green Connection today uh, is a letter that gives uh, uh, her uh, rights to act? No, I do not. I think a business has been in a place for 18 to 20 years without with not a complaint until one or two years ago. Um, I, I don't think there's a real rush to judgment here. And I, I, you know, I, there are, I wouldn't necessarily want it in my backyard, but I think if you look at the history of this complaint and how long these folks have been there and, and not just good it was there when they moved in, uh, it, you know, it's just a question of equities here in my mind. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to get him back to where he's supposed to be in perhaps 1995. It, it's a very difficult question. Well, what, I, where were you in 1995? I know 20 years ago. I, you know, and, and, we're, and this is what we're working on. And I kind of hope the board would get involved in that discussion and try to feel out the complainants, you know, uh, get some sense of where they want to go with this. Um, because, you know, my sense is, I have my sense. Well, I think it's not. In, in this it letter it that I sent, frankly, it wasn't meant to be a letter that you could appeal. It was meant to update you. It was a courtesy on where I was at. So More of an information. It was informational, yeah. yeah. Well, since you sent it to us, isn't your letter, uh, doesn't your letter uh, imply by its terms that your belief is that the, that the use of the property for compost, for manufacturing compost, is lawfully pre-existing? Because if it was illegal, if it was an illegal use, would you have the authority to, to, uh, to, uh, to do that? I, I believe I'm time barred from enforcing uh, the, uh, you know, enforcing by law respect to Okay, so you think your, your position clearly, is, compost. your position is that the, that the relief available under uh, section seven the, 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 the six year statute of limitation on the building permit also applies to whatever the use that uh, ancillary use of the property was that wasn't mentioned in the well, building. Well, that is what I hang my hat on. I'll just add something else to that. Not only was the use listed uh, on the building permit, um, along with the other uses in the building, um, I also gave them a CO. And under the, if you look at the zoning file, the CO is, is indicator or, or you, you shall CO is given when the structures and uses on the premises are in conformance with the zone balance. And was that inadvertent? Yes, because I inherited this whole business back in nineteen ninety five. And I, I you know I had no reason to think it wasn't grandfathered. So you you think that we can't sit here tonight and decide that it's I think it's you can do anything you want. I just, I, I just, you know, I think procedurally, uh, it's in my hands. It's still, it's there. I know, think the I, expansion is. Uh, well, unless you, uh, I think there's case law, and I, I wish I brought it, but I remember reading something that an expansion can be so great as to make the the use ill, illegal. Well, that's fine, and that that's that's also. Um, now that I've acknowledged it's an expansion, I, I suppose Attorney Brodsky could head down that path. Yeah. Well, as long as you don't take any action, he doesn't have a remedy. Yes, he does. He can go to court and get an And, or uh, he can also appeal your decision. He has plenty of remedy. And I, just to assure you, as I did before, you know, we are working, at, for instance, the Board, I, the board of Health is looking at the noise issue. And uh, I have it over there today. And, you know, it's, it's something that I, you know, I, I think that is perhaps the most bothersome aspect of this. Um, I've been over there 10 times the last couple of months. I, I, there is no dust from that operation. Um, and I have not smelled anything. I'm sure over the years, I think perhaps the body in that you have noticed, but in the two months I have not smelled anything. Other than 
looking for something. Well, I've kind of had a uh, change of heart about this over the past several days. Uh, which you won't be happy about. Mm -hmm. Which you won't be happy about. Okay. I'm, no, I'm, I'm um, happy to have my answer. Because uh, I, I just, uh, I don't see anything uh, in, the, in the record I see, I see that the appellant has provided uh, a sufficient amount of evidence to demonstrate to, to demonstrate that the use of the property for composting may not be legal. And uh, uh, it's, it's funny that you see what you see in the building permit and I don't see it. Um, and, and you can't give a special permit to expand a, a, a use for a property that wasn't initiated legally. The question is, when the use has begun in 1992 and nobody does anything about it for 20 years, right, is there a latches issue that this board can implement? Do we have the power to say, well, we think maybe this is an illegal use, but um, you've waited 20 years, and this is too long. Yeah, there's no question that a use that has been in existence for more than seven years, um, uh, a, 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 by virtue of a building permit, yeah. um, is barred from enforcement, yeah. as is a building um, with a building permit, uh, with or without a building permit, which is enforcement barred after 10 years. Uh, you could build a house on the lot line, if I come along 10 years one day, with or without a permit, I cannot make you remove that structure. I and mean, that's the law. I mean, that's, 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 um, my call wasn't that when that was originally permitted, I thought it was legal. I, it was never my call. I, I, my, my call is on the time bar, and now I'm dealing with the expansion. And I thought I heard a two to one vote upholding the plan. Well, you did. But uh, since the vote hasn't been reduced to writing and filed uh, with the town with the town uh, clerk, uh, we have the power to reconsider our Okay. <laughs> my yeah. position my position hasn't changed. <laughs> you know, I was the one vote who said it was. I thought it was an illegal use and did not uphold you. Sorry. All right, I, I, I've said my piece. Right. And I think I have too. I think my position was well established at the last hearing, so I don't know if my brothers here have changed of heart and want to see a different vote. What does John think? I am still in favor of our original decision. I think the action he's taking now and looking at it and trying to get it resolved is an action I think we should let unfold. The agreement that we had with the applicant made in May, the agreement was that, uh, that the time for us to uh, act would be continued until tomorrow, that we would have to take a final vote and file a decision by tomorrow. So <laughs> knowing that I'm not going to be around tomorrow, uh, I drafted two decisions. Uh, uh, one that goes one way and one that goes the other. And um, so 
what I want to do is give each one of you These are two, these are both denials. The appeal. I want to grant the appeal. Yeah, I know. She, I didn't get. She didn't print print them both out, or I sent them the wrong ones. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. You can just cross some things up. No, no, no. Let's just because here's 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 what here's my here's my suggestion. Whatever decision we make tonight is going to be appealed, and uh, the the question is, what's the most efficient way of uh, of of dealing with uh, how how those appeals proceed. I'm really troubled by the, the by the latches issue. What, what do you, I don't understand what you mean by your, what are you troubled? Well, but I'm I'm, trou I'm troubled about the fact that uh, that that uh, that a use that initiated 20, 20, 18 to 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Um, hasn't been challenged until now. Except that As, you go back to right Especially when the, when the, when the applicant, um, you know, has been intimately aware of it. It's not like the applicant just moved into the neighborhood. Okay, but under Cape Resorts, we talked about this last time, it says latches or estoppel is not a defense to an action to enforce municipalities, bylaws, or zoning ordinances. It just doesn't exist. You don't get to you don't get to pull that out of your pocket and say <coughs> you sat on your rights. It's an illegal use. It's an illegal use. It can't be. It can't be allowed, no matter what. Jeff's got something different. Well, I, I frankly didn't come here today prepared to discuss any of this because it was my understanding that, that the vote at the last hearing was an affirmation of Neil's denial of the request for enforcement in its entirety. Um, well, Jeff, in all fairness, and there's and absolutely I, no way you could have that understanding because that is precisely not what happened. It's apparently Attorney Brodsky's understanding this evening as per his client this afternoon. Yes, it has. All agree yeah. over the last many months, and it most definitely was exactly what my understanding was when I left the last hearing. And I, I'll even bring it further because I had the discussion with my client. Is is my understanding was is that this board had a certain period of time to act, and then a certain period of time to take final action. And those two things are mutually exclusive with one another, and they were addressed by Attorney Brodsky in his prior letter, granting the extension because he was the applicant. I, I did not come here this evening expecting to discuss the Cape Hotel case. I don't, I, I, for instance, I haven't shepherdized that. I don't know what law has transpired since. I know it was a Court of Appeals case that came <coughs> out in the 80s, I believe. This is an SJC case I'm looking at. But, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, that's obviously. So, I mean, what I'm here, and, and, and if I can just amplify a little, is he issued a letter today, and that letter, that letter stated that he believed that there was an expansion of the use. And so now that's something that we have to deal with. I think that to the extent that this board was thinking it was going to come in here tonight and vote a finding, for instance, or something along those lines that it felt that there was an expansion, well, that's effectively what's been the position that the building inspector has taken, and now we have to deal with it. Uh, and, and we've been trying to deal with this. This isn't an easy issue. Um, we've been trying to deal with this for many months, and Mr. Nielsen has, has, has Indicated in his letter 
closed. We didn't close the record. You voted to uphold the determination of the building inspector. What else is there left? What are the questions? Well, I mean, I think I think what me, what uh, what Nicole read was pretty accurate, right? So, all right, I have a decision here. I have a, I have a motion. And that, the motion is that uh, last month uh, we, we dealt with that portion of, we, we, <laughs> we took the vote that we took. And, and, and uh, my understanding uh, was that tonight we were going to deal with the rest of the request that Mr. Brodsky had made that didn't um, pertain specifically to his power with respect to the enforcement of a building permit or violation of a building permit. And that is what we have left to deal with. So I'm going to make a motion that uh, the board find that there was insufficient evidence presented by the appellants to support their claim that the, the rest of the building inspector's denial of the appellant's request for enforcement was erroneous. I didn't hear that. Anymore. I didn't understand it. <laughs> Try that again. by the appellants to support their claim that the building inspector's denial of the appellant's request for enforcement was erroneous. But isn't that what we voted last time? What's the difference between, we already voted that last time. Well, we, we, we voted it with respect to the issue of the statute of limitations. The second part of the vote cleans up what's left of that, that my understanding is we did not deal with which is whatever the uh, wh whatever enforcement authority he has beyond the enforcement of a building of the violation of a building permit. So, so, you, all right. So let me say, to the extent there is any. So you're saying he there was insufficient evidence that he that he failed to enforce the that his expansion. That, that, that his denial of their request was erroneous. Denial of request for what? Ex for. The expan regarding the expansion? Yes. Well, whatever. I mean, he I never denied it. My denial was very, very specific. I denied, I, I refused to extinguish the use. That was my That denial. was it. I agree. And I, in, in, after uh, Attorney Brodsky sent me the second request for enforcement, uh, which was not contained in the first uh, request for enforcement, uh, although, you know, he certainly specifically got the same in case, um, I disagree. Um, I, I backed it on it. Well, this is, this is what I'm trying to achieve here because <laughs> when we wrap this up, okay, uh, and uh, you've now put into play with your letter um, the issue of expansion of the use. Right. They have a remedy with regard to this request for enforcement, which I want to give them so that they have it. Well, they say, also have another remedy. If, if they have a remedy. This is they now have a written instrument. If they feel any expansion of that use results in the use being extinguished, uh, you know they can pursue that through this letter. I, I agree. I mean, I don't think the second question is before us because it was never the the request for enforcement regarding the expansion was never denied. Turn it. Right, which that's been taken care of. So here we are now, you know, the way that you just crafted this proposed motion is, is in the negative and it deals with an issue that Neil didn't address in his determination at all. And and to go beyond that, again. Well, I, I, I didn't deal with any issue here. It says know, it's very generic. I know, and this is a complex issue. For and a reason, <laughs> it's yeah. generic. I get it. 
there is insufficient evidence presented by the app appellants to support their claim that the building inspector's denial of the appellant's request for enforcement was erroneous. I guess I gotta look at their I guess I gotta look at their Wouldn't request again because I just don't read it. Where is it? Wouldn't it be investigated uh, whether the building commissioner ought to be denied with respect to his issue with respect to his statements concerning Well, I see this. To the extent of the I, 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 Go can, look at the cases that discuss appealing the denial of the building inspector's determination. Okay? Right, there's a, there's a uh, standard of proof. It's the appellant's burden. And, uh, and, and he has to show that the denial was, of the request for enforcement was erroneous. That's the language. It achieves the, you know, I mean, you're looking at gift horse in the mouth. I think that it's, I think that it's a second vote on the same issue that we've already voted. No. No, I, and actually, Adam does say it. He says he, moreover, Mr. Duggan failed to consider the expansion of the illegal uses, which are not subject to the Section 7 limitation period. So, to, to, the, to the extent that he does request that's, that. That's th what. Yeah. <clears throat> but maybe we don't, let's not be so broad. Let's, let's say right there regarding, the, I mean, add in there regarding what, the expansion. Last question. Yeah. What is the statutory timeline on the building inspector responding uh, favorably to the request for enforcement? Is this a quiz? <laughs> <laughs> there isn't yet. I have the answer. Yeah, I don't there think is, there is not. <laughs> there is not. Well, the only one that would would appeal this at this point, this particular issue, would be Adam and his client, and he's not going to appeal it because you've agreed with him. Right. Right. So then we would be the ones to appeal to the extent that we believe we're adversely affected by the decision of the building inspector, as stated in his letter today. Right. That letter today was written after the application made by Adam on behalf of his client. By the way, so were all of Adam's subsequent letters, and I understand that they were put forward here as evidence to the ultimate question that was put forward in his application. But his application was an application to appeal the determination of the building inspector who denied his request for enforcement. That's been, that is the issue. Yeah. And that's what you guys have the jurisdiction and authority pursuant to your bylaw which you have. If there's another question that comes before this board, or if there's an application that comes before this board, then jurisdiction is conferred again, and that very well might happen. But I just don't see that it's here now. And, that, and that's just a respectful statement on my behalf. You know, I mean, I know, again, that this is a very complex <coughs> issue that we've all been dealing with procedurally and substantively. But what I don't want to do is set up a situation where there have to be two lawsuits. But you are not the one making that determination. Adam would be making that determination. Well, it depends on how we act. I guess I'm a little confused. Are you, are, are you, consider, are you considering the vote that we took the last time regarding the illegal use done? Are you suggesting, yes. okay, you're not suggesting a second vote on that? No. Okay. Not right, not now. No. Okay. Um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that, that um, insofar as his, his response was partial, all right? Right. All right, that we still have left that portion of his request that, that dealt with the expansion of the use. Okay. So basically, it, it, what you're saying is um, assuming that um, the Nielsen's Ms. Hopkins and Ken Nielsen um, have requested um, enforcement with respect to the expansion. You want to deny that? Yes. Because now there is evidence. I mean. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can live with that. Yeah. I, I think I think that's true. There is nothing to enforce. 
regarding the expansion. And to the extent that there's an appeal, um, the appeal is, a, is an appropriate venue in which um, Ms. Hopkins has the opportunity to ride herd on Mr. Duggan and, and uh, who's going to ride herd on me? <laughs> 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 to ensure that something is done yeah. to, uh, to ameliorate what's going on on the property. Well, she's getting it now. I mean, you've agreed that there's an expansion. And, and I have been all along. Right. And, and I'm not going to sit here and give you my daily schedule. But yeah, I don't want it. I have four enough on request reports are sitting on my desk that yeah. I put off to take care of this one. So yeah. get the letter up tonight. So it, it, that's my reality. S so it, d let me ask you this. And, and when, when I complete, and I, it, uh, Sunday thinks Mr. Brodsky has an option to appeal now. Um, yeah. When I complete, he will certainly have an option to appeal. He has an opportunity to appeal the decision, you know, upholding my decision. Yeah. So it's not without uh, opportunity. Right. But why would they, I don't know why they would appeal when you are, well, you are enforcing the, the expansion. They might appeal the, uh, the uh, decision. The, 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 the implicit finding that it was. The decision a that it was by time bar. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that I understand, but that's, that's the first question. I think there's two parts to this appeal. Right. The illegal this use here, and the expansion. I, I think the question's been raised. If a non-conforming use is, is expanded, uh, and I know Attorney Brodsky raised it. I'm yeah. not familiar with that, that, that case law. But he said Neither am I. Huh? Yeah, I yeah, am. The, the expansion no, no, renders the, the use null and void? Right. <coughs> With a motion we have. It's right. It's it's right here. It's, oh, it's, it's in here. Okay. Do you have a copy? So that's the motion. Okay. Did you make it? I did. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Sign our names, right? How many do you want, Nicole? Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> how, many, how many do you need? How do I get off Two? this board? How many copies? Yeah. You already signed it, John. So you're done with me, Bill? Yep. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. We're all signing the same thing, right? You didn't have multiple copies of something. Make nope. sure before you. We have one more copy. Yeah, well, he has to make sure he's turning in the right thing. I don't know what difference is. John, you need, to uh, you need to yeah. sign that one. These two are. Yeah, exactly these two are. Same. The only thing that was different was the last paragraph. I, I, I gave this one, got, there was two copies of this made instead of uh, well, copies of Oh, here's the third one. These are all the same. Okay. It's done. We can yeah. file it. Let's, just, let's just make sure, I'll, you know, because I, I drafted them all. I still thought it was illegal. Okay. Yeah. I know. It's over. All right. I he was going to change his vote. Let me give that to the vote. Next. We'll pass the no, nobody's a, nobody wants to come up. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, how are you? How are you? Good, good to see you. Good Yeah. I'm sorry, this is which? Buttonwood. Ten Buttonwood. Okay. Howdy. Hi. Proceed. Good evening. Uh, my name is Larry Mayo. I am an attorney representing Scott Horton, uh, the owner of 10 Buttonwood Lane in Situate, Massachusetts. And uh, to my left is Jeff, Jeff Hassett, who is the 
project engineer uh, representing uh, Morse Engineering. Um, again, we're here today uh, before the board looking for a finding to reconstruct the pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling located at 10 Buttonwood Lane in Situate. Um, we think that the, that the uh, proposed, the newly proposed single-family dwelling uh, won't increase the non-conforming nature of the structure, but will in fact lessen the non-conformity of the property. Um, specifically, what we're looking to do is take down the existing home and build a no new home uh, approximately 11 feet further back from the street so as to allow the septic system presently sitting to the uh, far I'm sorry. Wait, hold on one second. Could you all close the doors, please? My ADHD uh, is distracting me. Go ahead. Great. Sure. Again, specifically, um, what we're looking to do is take down the existing home and build a new home uh, about 11 feet further back from the street so as to allow the septic system, which is presently located to the far rear of the yard, to be located uh, to the front yard. Now, yeah, I, I think that um, these proposed improvements are really encouraged by the situate zoning bylaws because, number one, again, we're bringing the front yard setback into compliance with the zoning rates. Uh, and secondarily, and perhaps most importantly, we're removing the septic system from what is a, number one, FEMA flood zone, <laughs> number two, the Situate Floodplain and Watershed Protection District, and number three, the 100-foot uh, uh, conservation wetlands buffer zone. Um, you know, the only reason the premises is nonconforming is because of the street frontage. Uh, the property sits in the R3 district, which, of course, requires 10,000 square feet. Uh, this particular property contains approximately 18,760 square feet. Um, again, the problem is that it contains only 70 feet of frontage versus the 100 feet that is required. Uh, nothing else about the existing home or the proposed home uh, would be out of compliance or is currently out of compliance or would be as a result of this project. Um, hence, in my humble opinion, I think the ZBA should find that the proposed dwelling isn't substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what is the existing non-conforming dwelling. Indeed, less so. Hmm. Uh, is, the, is the total gross living area increasing, and by how much? The total gross living area is increasing, and Jeff, I think you have that. Uh, yes, the existing um, structure is 926 square feet. The proposed is 2,509 square feet, <coughs> including the porches. That's pretty substantial. Um, <coughs> why isn't there a request for the greater than right. I think you need that. 25 percent? Uh, it's part of the application, I believe. Yeah. In fact, I think that's why we're here today, because. Well, yeah. I don't see it on there. It doesn't say what section anyway. Okay. All right. Got any questions, John? Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, it actually says it on the... Uh, oh, it does, good. The, yeah. 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 Okay. Got any uh, questions, John? No, I, I just the, again, the moving, the setbacks, the front's going to be 28.5. Correct. Right. Is, is that the porch overhang? That's um, to the front of the porch, the overhang. So that's a roof overhang there, so... I think the overhang will actually come another 12 inches. Okay. So is that to the wall? Is that? That's to the wall, yes. All right. That's to the wall. Yeah. And then, again, the leaching field is going to be in the front. And the uh, shed in the rear is going to remain? Yes. Good. Sir? Nada? No, 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 except that uh, to note that uh, this should be an aesthetic improvement because the grass is always greener over the septic tank. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so, we should be Well, good. I'm really disappointed that we can't have more controversy in this. What's it? That was a tough act to follow, I might add. I didn't know what to expect. So. I hope that we leave those in the end. All right. Speak a little fear. Motion? Uh, move to grant uh, the application's uh, request to uh, raise and reconstruct um, his house as per the application. And plans. And plans. Increasing the gross floor area by more than 
And should we give the uh, date of the plans? As as we have it in the file. Six twelve twelve. Revise six thirteen twelve. We can do that. Right plans. That's the date they're giving six thirteen. You got the revision date right. Looks like seven thirteen twelve. Yes. Is that the revision? Sure. Yeah, that's the one that just came in. I just want to make sure. Right. All right, that's a sure. Thanks. So we reference it. Second. All right. Discussion. All those in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anyone here that would want to be heard with regard to this application? For or against? Thank you. Hearing none. Motion's been made and second to approve the application as made and with plans submitted therewith. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Frank, you Opposed? get to vote even though you're. Do I? Even though it's not officially recorded. Aye. There you go. <laughs> we do things different than Lord Health. I guess. <laughs> All right, whose decision so is that? Um, that is that. Okay. That's mine? Yeah. Okay. Unless you'd like to do it? No. Nope. Oh, shoot. <laughs> well, you still don't, you don't get credit when the lawyer writes the decision. Oh, all right, I'll do it. All right, no, seriously, before you say no, bear this in mind, all right? If we write the decision, we have 90 days. Okay, all right? yes, I, I understand. I, I, I thought we were kidding for a moment. I'm happy to write the decision. I wasn't kidding. I never kid about as somebody as else writing I could that. get a copy of the vote, specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah great. Yeah. Yeah, and she'll I'm even sure. she'll even send you some of the templates. <laughs> so I don't have to do it then. No, but you don't. Yeah. You're not. I get the last one. Uh oh, what's worse? Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. What's next? I want to know. <laughs> no, no, that's not. A, I didn't understand the question. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. You're all set. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a Palmer Beetle one next. Oh, that guy. I think we should nominate Frank to write all of them because he does that on yeah. the Board of Health. Oh, what? You write all write of them. Write all the decisions. For the Board of Health. Yeah, so I should be excused. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on it. <laughs> You're probably still, You're still on it? Yeah. Isn't there a state law that prohibits you? You know, it's funny you asked that question. I had that conversation with the uh, Ethics Commission today. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody else asked the same question, I said, gee, I never even thought of that. They asked me to do, you know, to stay on for the ex expiration of the last year of my term. It never even occurred to me. So the answer is no, I'm, I have no problem. Oh, it's because it's, you have to be employed. If, uh, I'm not getting paid for either job. Right. So <laughs> I have correct? no financial it's interest. That's great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I have to pay attention. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Paul Marabito from Ross Engineering Company. I'm representing the owners and applicants of the property at 109 uh, Hummer Rock Beach Road. Uh, the purpose of the filing is twofold. One is to seek a special permit under Section 830 of the Zoning Bylaw for a house that was uh, destroyed by fire. The subject house was uh, one of the four houses that burned earlier this year in that uh, fire down in Hummer Rock. And the other is under Section 810-2B for um, reconstructing the home on a lot that is um, substandard and that does not meet the required lot area of 10,000 square feet and does not have the um, required setbacks on, on the one location, which is 7.8 feet instead of 8. Uh, the proposal is to push the house back about three feet from the seawall, so it will be placed in the um, AO zone as opposed to the velocity zone. Um, and also the house will be uh, less wide. Um, currently it's 9.3 feet from the uh, uh, sideline to the north and 7.8 feet to the south. Mm -hmm. um, the lot is um, a rectangle of 50 by 150. The proposed house will be 10 feet off of each side setback. Um, we will increase the setback from, which is from Home Rock Beach Road, to 40 feet to 43.3. Um, setback from the 
Um, the westerly side will be increasing from 54 to 54.8. The line you see in blue is the proposed dwelling, which will be 52 by 30, and the orange is the existing dwelling, which um, will be We have received an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission and there's been one zone of field taken. Um, the existing septic system is going to uh, remain in place. Um, this foundation will be on a uh, wood driven tile foundation to meet the DEP requirements for the work on the coastal zone and the barrier beach. Thank you for that. I'll make my presentation and answer any questions you have. I, I, I did put in the chart to show you the uh, non-conformities and how when this site is, when the new building is completed, um, every setback will be conforming. And the only non-conformity would be the uh, left frontage and the lot area. Is this the first of the houses, the four to be rebuilt? Pardon? Is this the first of the four to be rebuilt? As far as I know. Where's the, I'm sorry, Paul, I, I, where's the frontage? Where's what? What, what, what is it front on? Hummer Rock Beach Road <laughs> is the address. Hummer Rock Beach Road is the ocean. <laughs> 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 I didn't put it on the plan because I was afraid someone might try to, uh, try to drive down it. That's something. You you know, you have a similar situation in Sand Hills. Um, I think it's C Seaside Road. There's houses with addresses of Seaside Road. We've done work on two or three of them. And Seaside Road is on the ocean. Yeah. 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 So the the uh, existing twenty foot wide passageway is the is the practical yes. that's, access. That's the access into that property off of Marshfield Ave. Yeah. That's how they access it. So it's kind of like a side alley, like uh, exactly. that runs parallel to Central Street. Exactly. All the way down. I believe the um, kind of a sandy. Twenty foot right of way stops at our property. Oh. And the other people come in from the uh, street to the, the north. Other side. Yeah. That's Webster Street. Webster. Fascinating. <coughs> Yes, sir. It, it doesn't stop. That road is the original Hummerock road that used to go all the way up the cliff. Really? So, so way back in the day, when people built sheds and barns and whatever the hell over it, but that had actually the old cotton path that used to go all the way up the cliff. Yeah. Okay. And it goes on the next house, so it doesn't stop at his house on the third house end, and 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 with with the last house, kind of the other neighbors come in from Webster Street. So there is, I do have to get by that property to be clear that it doesn't end at his house. There's another house just next door. You're Don't 111. worry. I'm 111, yep. Yeah. I'm the Davis, yep. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Questions well, for Mr. Marabito? Is there anything going outside this footprint? Steps coming down or roofs or anything else? I, there I, are, I, um, I see the old steps, but I don't know if there's any, yes. any additional. There are steps. There are steps that are going to be in this area here. Um, so the, um, there, there's an exemption. There, there is an existing entrance on this side of the house. This way is not the park. They walk in and there'll be a side entrance here. And then there'll be another entrance for the existing area. So there are, there's a set of open stairs here. This will replace the And you said the existing septic system is going to stay where it is? Yes. Sir? Anyone else? Anyone, uh, anybody from the neighborhood? Frank? Nope. Good. All right. Motion. Nice work. Always. Okay, thank you. Thanks for. Uh, not coming in with 9.8 feet. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I wanted Good to make message. this easy and simple. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, move to grant um, the application of Gerald McCarthy for, um, for 
a special permit to reconstruct uh, his dwelling at 109 Hummer Rock Beach Road, which was damaged in fire. What, what was the, when was the fire? March 9th. March 9th of 2012. <clears throat> what happened to you? And to increase, uh, Sorry. to allow the increase of the gross floor area, uh, 53%, as per the plan submitted by the applicant this date. I meant, I meant uh, fire. fire. Oh, way, way better. There's nothing there. Nothing? I've worked with Neil. We already cleaned out the foundation, so we're just going to go with the next steps and rebuild. But we don't have to. But we you lost your house? house in Humrack, and we're never going to fulfill that. Yeah. So we don't have to get it. They can rebuild the matter, right? Yeah. As long as they're not in so. Yeah, it was a 10 bedroom, 4 bath house. I don't know anyone who <laughs> would need that at this point in time in their life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well um, we have people here from Humrack in yes. the area. I, I just got to make a little statement. Really of course. Thank you. Um, yeah. I noticed okay. you moved back 30 feet from the seawall, and you're to you get out of the velocity. Yes. My understanding is that if you go three feet higher than what's required, uh, you get a substantial break in your time. So you have to go on pilings anyway, so oh, yeah, yeah. keep that in mind um, when, when you're going up. Three feet higher than what's required. Uh, if you're late. Now that's three feet higher in any flood zone? Yep. So if, if I'm in the, um, I'm, if this house will be in the AO zone, which is a two foot depth. Which means the yeah, first floor would have to be two right, feet above grade. I also grade. wanted to suggest that if there's a, and I don't agree with the interpretation, but I'm not NFIB and I'm not FEMA, that a, if a deck is added and, and attached to the house, uh, in, in, in the deck is in the velocity zone, uh, there is a school of thought at, at a very high level that that is the whole house is in the velocity zone. The uh, deck it won't be attached to the house. It'll probably be that far from it, but it isn't. Okay. Physically so attached. Yeah. No way. That's the way we've had it done on all the houses down there, and we do it for that reason. So the deck, because the theory is that usually the decks are going to go. You don't want to attach them to the house, so it does damage to the house. And every house I've been in. Pardon? Well, people are in the planning stage. I think you need to be aware of that. Huh? Yeah, did you finish making the motion? All right, seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Don't go anywhere. Paul, oh, can you email me your little charty thing? Pardon? Email, like you did the last time, can you email me your your charty sure. thing? Must be your... Inheritive. Must be you're going to be writing the decision. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want it for personal <laughs> use. You can do that. Do you want these back though? No. <laughs> no. You know how much paper we printed today for conservation? We went through a half a case of paper. And a full roll of ball. Oh, next. Okay, our next Proceed. <laughs> okay. Good thing we did them in the right order. The owners recently uh, purchased the property at number 520 here in Hanley Road. And the reason we're here is to uh, seek a special permit and finding to uh, construct an addition. Back is 30 feet from away. The existing house is 14.5 feet. Um, 
the second floor addition would be 22.6 feet from the layout line of Cotton Tail Way. And we're at the way, it is required to be 30 feet. Also, an increase in the gross floor area of approximately 60%. Um, and this is on the uh, open deck. I see, see the water? Pardon? High enough to see the water? Probably not. In a storm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You mean the layout? Yeah. It is, but um, there, there's um, quite a few of those in town going back to the 40s and 50s. Well, since you own to the middle of the road anyway, I suppose they tried to make things. I mean, there's a picture in there. The, um, it uh, looks like a, a driveway going down from Hadley <coughs> Road, and there's two houses in the back. Yeah. We've actually surveyed three of the four lots there, including this one. So. Yeah. Okay. John, any questions? Uh, th that is a gravel drive that they use now, then? Or I believe so. <laughs> right. Sarah? Nope. Frank? Nope. <coughs> Motion? No, I'm sorry. Anybody in the neighborhood like to be heard? An agreeable crowd tonight. Yes, we scared them. Motion? Motion to grant uh, the applicant's request for special permit finding pursuant to section 810.2B uh, for proposed issuance increase of 60 percent in gross square foot of a non conforming structure located at 529 Hadley Road. As per plans As per dated plan. June 28th, 2012, Ross okay. Engineering. Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Peter. Can right, okay, you say it's your question when he is here? The owner's thinking of putting a uh, garage at the back of the house here. The garage would be 30 feet off the way line and would meet the setbacks from the rear to the side. Is there any reason why you couldn't do that as a matter of right? I, I can't think of it. Is this a garage? Yes. No, no uh, habitable space? No. Okay. If, if we were increasing the habitable space of the pre existing occupancy structure by more than 20%, we'd have a That's right. the garage. He'd have right. he would, because he'd be increasing by more than 20%. Right. 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 That would be a decision, John, to take the edge Who was the previous? Who was the McCarthy's? So Sarah has Sarah's right right. Sarah writing, writing McCarthy. John. John's doing Pestone. What? Who? Oh. Well. Well, let's uh, don't jump the gun here. <laughs> What's right <laughs> away mean? What does right away mean? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, Monday. Monday? Oh, really? Okay. Well, let's 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 get them up here and deal with it. Drill them. Drill them. Hi. Hi. Neighbors in Cohasset know you're moving to Situate? Yes, <laughs> we are. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. 
Yeah, the jelly. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you're doing. Um, well, we're buying a, a, it's a ranch right now, and we're adding a second floor. Um, but we're pretty much, we're staying in the existing uh, for, uh, footprint. footprint, yeah. yeah. Um, and, yeah, and, and when Nicole was saying, um, we are, it, it's, we are a little under the gun only because we're buying this house and it's all contingent on our closing and they, they need the permit in order for us to close on the house that we're buying and because we're doing a construction loan. So we were just going to request if possible, if we could have, if you do decide that it's fine and you pass it, if we possibly could get it as soon as you're able to do it so we could. Okay, you know that, you know, you if we file the decision tomorrow, you still wouldn't have it for 20 days. We have to wait the 20 days. Right. So we will have to extend the closing. Yeah. We, we had already extended it once with them, and we understand that, okay. but uh, so we're just, right. And why are you here so late? No, it's not. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so well, tell I, us what didn't, you're doing. You're we going didn't know, we, we, we didn't even know. We, we had a... Um, Go through. We just didn't design. know the process, really that's process, all. Yeah, and yeah. fortunately, Nicole did put us on the docket for tonight because that yeah. we would have been in big trouble if we had to wait another month. But we, we really didn't even know what, it, what this entailed. And because okay. we're adding more you know, than the 20%, that's why yeah. we're here. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, right now it's pretty much, you know, it was more like a summer cottage. Um, <clears throat> the people that were living there now were just, um, yeah. Okay. Um, you are? Dick Rockwood, I did the drawings for the seven. All right, so you did the, this is, you at Morse Engineering? Or no, you were the architect? No, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so you have, a, Neil, yeah. <laughs> walk us through this. Tell us what they're doing. Uh, they're putting a second floor on uh, a non-conforming structure. The, uh, the new house is going to be 23 feet. Okay. The new house? Well, the rebuilding. The, the second floor is going to be 23. Really? Yeah. Those drawings are evening scale. Okay. Nice. Short people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there uh, <laughs> any other tricks? I mean, it's, you know, 3.9 and 6.3. I mean, it's pretty tight to the line there, but they, they can't, don't seem to be able to do anything about that. Because you're going right over the, the existing house. Yeah, exactly. The you're only not changing thing, the footprint. No, no. Oh, right where the deck is, um, that. That's okay. That's yeah, the top floor, but we're not, we're not expanding back or front or side at all. That's good. They don't have any room. All right. Is there anyone here? In the audience, who uh, would like to ask a question or be heard? All right, John. Uh, look, I, again, all the setbacks remain the same. There's no change in the footprint except a little overhang. Yeah, and I mean, I'm looking at the house. The house that's most impacted, um, um, that they're closest to, is a you know a big monster too. So it's not like he's got a I think it's one of the last big complaint. The smaller home. See the roof deck on that? Oh my God, Neil, <laughs> is the roof deck on this uh, neighbor's house legal? <laughs> you didn't see it. Do you see it? No. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Are they permitted? Neil? <laughs> we'll be tomorrow. I'm going to look at about 1,000 views a year. Wow. I see. I didn't even notice. That's on the as, as you leave Standish Ave, it's on the reverse side. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's right behind. Next door to me. Uh, Which is yeah. the house? Oh, you're in the house. <coughs> is this yeah. the house? I'm right behind you. Do you know when did it go yeah, up? Long before I moved here. Really? Yeah, it, it looks pretty rough. Is that right? There's got to be a violation. Really? That's kind of a shame. Let's see. How long have you been here? All right. Looks like some so, right no there. one in the audience to be heard. Nice little Any, though. Anybody got any questions for these lovely folks? Uh -oh. I do not. Guess not, huh? None. All right. Um, John, since you did such a good job with the last motion, <laughs> yeah. practice makes perfect. Go ahead. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Motion request uh, section 40, section six special permit finding to add second floor to existing non conforming single family dwelling located at 25. Standish Ave, as referenced in. Um, oh. Oops. Nothing. I, okay. I'll bring it up in a minute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> as referenced in uh, Morse Engineering Plan, dated seven twelve twelve. Yeah. File there with. All right. Second. Second. Discussion. No, except that I, I, what I don't see is, and now I'm looking, you, you don't own the property yet, right? Stevens? No, that's why we're, um, oh, yeah, that's the, uh, why we need the, um, right, because right, we're, it's, it's, it's on, obviously it's under agreement. We've right. done the appraisal already. We've got, okay, you know what, yeah, that, that's fine, but we oh. just simply need something from the present owner, the record Actually, owner. This, the purchase and sale agreement will be. That, that oh, gives okay. you permission to. Represent. Represent yeah. it. Yeah, because this you don't own the house, so you don't really have the right to come in here. Oh, you I see. You have to get it through them, okay. so you just have to. They have to write something. Copy of the purchase and sale agreement yeah, is work. sufficient. Yeah. Uh, I could get that. And yeah. Okay. So that needs to be filed with with um, Nicole. Okay, I can. It's get just it a formality, and okay. yeah, I'll get that. Okay. All right. Yes, I second. And um, all right, so moved and seconded. <laughs> Uh, no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Unanimously approved. Now let's talk uh, about. Uh, I would write this in, in, uh, and give it to Nicole tomorrow, but I will not be here. I can do it by Monday, but that's three days longer than that. Is there anybody? Do you want to swap with me, John? Uh, you want to swap one with me? So, so uh, you can write it. Can you write it? Can you help these folks out and? Get a decision out tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I can do something like that. Can you? Yeah. yeah. I don't want to put you on a, on a, on a, you know, on a spot. <laughs> All right, so I'll swap with you and. Um, I get next week off. Then. Which one did you have? Did you have McCarthy or. Um, I had. Uh, or I had, I had my okay. That was John. So. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, John. What time do you think you'd get that out through email? Well, I'm going to say to you. I know. Might be tonight or tomorrow morning. Sorry, John. Sorry. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. All right. I think I might have a couple, so. Um, can I give my proxy vote to Peter? Because I'm going to be, I have a hearing, and I won't be in email. I won't, I won't be. Here at all. Well, but I, you know, I, I, it's not a problem. You're going to, John, when will you have it out? I'll send it to Neil for any corrections. <laughs> send it to Neil for corrections. Yeah, I'm going to be at a hearing at 11 o'clock in court, so I won't get it by before noon. At all. all right, is that will you be able to get that purchase and seal? I'll get That's it for, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. get yeah. it okay. here okay. tomorrow. Yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just have, I can get it. Yeah, we'll get it. Right. Yeah. You open at what time? Okay. <coughs> okay. <laughs> no, we'll get it here. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Well, I've always written it that, that they they can't, they're they're ap they're applying the applying on behalf of the owner, and then you just it's a matter of making sure that the record reflects that they have the permission. Do we, do we have the name of the paranormal? 
Stebbins. No, not Stebbins. It's in the. It's in the deed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The current one. Yeah. The one that. It's not that. It's um, yeah. this one. So you have to turn on. Nobody. Nobody. It's it. in it. Yeah. I think it's in the deed. Yeah. 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 As long as it's in here. I do not. I'll oh, actually, it's on the. Uh, Plus it comes up on the taxes as well. Hold on to the Stockbridge Road stuff. I have a feeling we're going to need it. Okay, you all set? All right. Thank you very okay. much. Right, great. Thanks Thank so you. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Nicole? And yet someone sits. I don't know. I just came to see the board. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't have much of a life, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was mean. How about a garage? We can well, sell your garage today. What's more exciting? You do the selection chair. Selection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we've got a motion, so this girl can go home. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to call for a oh, ride. Uh, here's what we do, our, our little practice. Uh, it says mind practice anyway. Given the for Nicole's budget for page paper clips uh -huh. and, and elastic bands. What we do is, when we're done, if it's if you don't have to write the decision, you take the paper. Oh, no, 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 that needs, the photos need to be part of the record. You have the she has the photos. photos. You have a set? And then we, we take all we the take paper, paper clips, clips and give them to Nicole so that she can Sadly. reuse them. I'm gonna have to tell Jennifer that, because uh, you know she's, she's clearly uh, blowing her budget on because I can't buy pens anymore, I take spoons to the end of my pen and make it to the end of my pen. You've got to play them on the board for that. You don't want the staples though, right? I'll pass the staples. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Well, you've been making all the motions, so go ahead. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second, all in favor, aye. Right. There we go. There you go. Now she can go home. See, Frank, and the fun part is you get to see all these architects and decide what you like and what you don't like in case you want to do anything to your house. Frank, do you have a name for you? No, I, I, no, We're working I, on that. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah, was the we don't even get to sit up in a big chair here. We sit oh, down there. Oh, this, is, yeah. this is special. Huge. Thank you. Uh oh, I see. Sell out. I mean, uh, it's, it's huge sell out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right to the very end. Oh, good. It's great.